Hello everybody, this is um, Jerome Wright again, and I'm going to be decoding another Renaissance artist painting um, in this video, okay? Um, you're looking at, in this video, you're looking at, um, this is tit Titans or Titanians, I don't know how they actually pronounce that, I was actually calling it Titans because it's T-I-T-I-A-N. There's an I there before the um, the A, so it's Titians, um, and this is um, Titians. He was a famous Renaissance artist, artist, and um, and this is um, the Venus of Urbino, okay. And this is a 1538 painting, a 1538 painting. Again, people, I'm going to ask that you keep in in mind that a lot of what I'm revealing to you in these videos. And these underlining images and encryptions in these paintings is information that should have not been known at this point because it had not been established, um, meaning that of um, the information about dinosaurs, about reptilians, about bloodlines. And a lot of these information people are, are like um, that I'm revealing here are way be before um, times that they should have actually known any of this stuff. And um, it's very disturbing and it's very troubling because that means that a lot of technology um, and, um, and re reference to um, um, to mechanical technology and then plus on top of that medicinal technology. I mean, we could uh, it it could have actually benefited the mass of, of peoples, and it only was um, actually privileged to just a select few based on everything now that I'm showing you. And I mean. Our lives could have been in a whole nother different direction had um, had this not been the case and had this information been revealed to the masses of people. And um, if you're not angry, you should be because, I mean, there's times that, I mean, there's our loved ones, the six ones that could have died. And you start to wonder if, in fact, there could have been a, um, a cure if they if they suffered needlessly. I mean, if there was a cure. And I say that the answer is a profound yes. I mean, because a lot of these um, informations that I'm gathering now shows you that had they put, been put in the right hands of the right minds and not those that thought that they were doing, playing God and playing the best interests of other people, and which they were not. I just imagine, I mean, um, with this information, had this information been shared with the right people, I mean, where this technology could have went. It could have went in a whole other direction. It could have altered the course of medicine, altered the course of technology. The, this this stuff that I'm sharing with you, since it was just in a tight knit circle, I mean everything with they, with them playing God was just what we are experiencing now. And so much as far as medicine and technology, it, um, from it's just from that small group of people that actually let the, a certain portion of this information leak out. So imagine had this information went to on to the masses and the minds of others that think outside of the realms and the box of this select few group that was in that tight knit circle just imagine what kind of medicine we'll be enjoying right now what kind of a technology we'll be enjoying right now i mean people i mean this is this is i mean what is happening what i'm showing you here um and 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 who I'm revealing that that actually kept this this stuff under wraps and all this is totally wrong you know what I mean? You can't look at it but in no way, shape, or form but that. Now, what are you looking at here? Again, you're looking at Titanians. Um, um, I'm painting of Urbania. Now, and I'm going to show you what this actually represents. Here you have a woman and a girl digging a chest. A woman here draped over with a bunch of um, um, clothing here. You know what I mean? Wrappings and, um, and cloths. And then over here you have a girl digging in a chest. And then over here, you have a nude woman laying on the bed, besides a dog, beside the dog. And by the way, this dog, I'm gonna don't let me forget, I'm gonna touch base on this dog here because this dog appears in this image and in this likeness in many Renaissance artist paintings. Okay, and it represents um, um, a, a, a symbolic meaning, and this is the reason why you see that. But why would you have a nude woman here, and where you have fully clothed people over there? I mean. The painting is odd in itself, and in a lot of Renaissance artists' artworks, you see this, and especially with children. I mean, you see children, people, and people accept this. 
these these paintings. You know what I mean? Especially in, in um, ancient biblical um, times. I mean, in, in history. I mean, it, this is accepted. You know what I mean? But if today, if a person wants to be um, um, taken, and it, it would all be taken to the... I mean, you couldn't do, get away with this today. The nudity with the children, with that, with this. And, I mean, you wouldn't be able to get away with it, but yet it was accepted back then. You know what I mean? All right. But anyway, let me keep going. I'm going to show you here what this represents. This over here represents ancient genetics. Because that's what all ancient Renaissance artists reflect in their artworks. Ancient genetics and the bloodlines. Okay? There are multiple bloodlines where there was manipulations and contaminations and bridgings. And these genetics were actually sent out to, um, to other nations to can contaminate the genetics of the masses of people. And this is why this information was kept secret to, but that, and privileged to only but a select few. Now, if what I'm stating is true, which it is, then there would need to be a large-scale record of all of this. And the large-scale record, and there is, this is true, the large-scale record of all of this, genetic charts, genetic bridgings, and reflecting genetic rails are reflected in Renaissance artists' artworks, which makes... A bunch of people guilty. Okay, a bunch of the art schools, the mentors. Um, a lot of these artists had a a, a, a strong bond and link to that of um of the um, of Christianity, um, the Vatican ancient rooted um, um 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 Christianity because during these eras, the um, um not the consulate but the um the um um, um Christian groups governed over what an artist can paint and what he couldn't paint and what he could reflect in his um, in his artwork. And in some cases, they were commissioned to paint these almost exact images in um, um, Christian um, 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 founded um, um, structures. Okay, so it was a knowledge, a given knowledge that was that was going on. It, this takes me back to a story about how when Michelangelo was doing the uh, ceiling in the Sistine Chapel, how the Pope came in there every day or every night when everybody was out and he would join um, um, Michelangelo up on the scaffolding and look at his work with a um, with a keen eye and, 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 and rushing him to get this done. I mean, the Pope actually had to approve each and every entry that Michelangelo actually drew on the wall or sketched on the wall to be painted the following day. You know what I mean? So they knew, and this stuff is all interlinking because it's interlinking and intermingling with a cult-like ritual, a practice that came from the beginning of time and actually extends throughout to today. All right. Over here shows genetics. Not just any genetics. It, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna specify the genetics in a minute. It shows genetics of our ancient rooted genetics that were unstable and all over the place in the bodies of mankind. That's what's shown in the in the in the chest here, in the in the background here, in the borderings, in the um in the back wall here. That's what this is showing, unstable genetics. Okay? And it shows that these genetics were infused over here after they were manipulated and bridged they were fused to here and then they showed the genetics being stabilized and under control over here all over the place and over here under control now what is shown here is that if you look at the coloring this represents semen this represents blood this represents the body and then if you look up in here well you can't see it but I can show you these animals represent ancient animals from an ancient time when you look at the dog think of the behemoth the, le the levertron and these ancient mythical creatures think of when you see these animals when you look at these renaissance artist paintings think of all of the creatures that contributed genetically which is known at this point um, or when you when a, a person looks at this um, this image and know exactly what it means when you look at this creature this dog you have to think of where this dog dog evolved from and this is the the genetic secret or the um, the genetic key or code to understanding what is happening here 
And now, this woman's hand, in her hand, you see these, these, these um, flower-like objects. If you look closely, these objects represent everything that is bound over here. And you look at the coloring right here. So what do this represent in her hands? You see the, um, the flowering um, is being black, red. It's showing it all bundled up all into one. And it's showing that it's un uh, under control here. Over here, you're seeing that there's a, co there's a cocktail of all of these things coming together. And the girl digging into the chest showing you that all of these things were completed and, con and, and, and condensed into one package. And manipulated and then given over here to where now they're not being worn uncontrollably, meaning genetically, not, worn, not, not, a, not a uncontrolled genetic luggage. But yet now, a controlled genetic luggage where it's actually being dispensed. So how's it being dispensed? Well, in this girl's hand here, you see that all of these things from over here, which I'm going to tell you what they are in a minute, here are now controlled in her hand. And then she has her other hand down on her crotch and letting you know that she is delivering these, these, these genetics through that of her crotch and through that of her body. And that's what this is all about. Now, I know, I know, I know it's... it's, it's it's, it's getting a little bit better, people, so hang in there with me. Let me show you what's going on over here. Which genetics are being manipulated? Well, first of all, the girl digging in the chest represents the cauldron-like. You ever hear um, um, about um, opening up Pandora's box and, 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 and the chest, uh, a box full of secrets and all of that? Well, this represents all of the above, this, this chest. It represents that of like the cult, like the cauldron, meaning that there is a chemistry um, in in this box, okay? And the chemistry of this box represents that there was a genetic splicing, bridging, and the chemistry of everything was placed into this box, and then that pulled out. So let's go to this woman. All right, follow me here. This represents the blood. Now, I can look at this woman and look at her bloodline and what's going on with her. This represents the blood and this represents the semen and the whites of mankind. Then it shows you how do how is it verified? Her one hand she has helping hold the chest up open. This hand here though, her left hand comes over and shows that she's pointing at her her vein, at her at her, at her arm here, meaning that these these substances from here were actually infused through a hand into here meaning is it gives you the idea that everything that she represents was placed into the box and i'm going to tell you what the box means now it gets deeper than that so follow me here people follow me here now she's been genetically bridged this woman what was she genetically bridged with that of reptilian how do I know that? Well, let me take you there. This is where it gets good, people. If you look at the cloak that she's wearing, right here, showing you that she's carrying the, um, the, the genetics over top of mankind's genetics, which is reptilian, shows that she was bathed in a genetic cocktail of that of reptilian, the ancient dinosaur. And there was three creations out of the dinosaur that she was actually breach I mean on um, bridge with. Take a look at back here. There's a head of a dinosaur and you'll see the teeth. There's the teeth right there. There's the head. I'm gonna bring it in closer and I'm gonna show you right quick. Uh let me bring it over this way. I'm gonna bring it in as close as possible. Now you can Google this image people and see for yourself. Oh gosh. Alright. Look right there. There's the teeth. There's the snout of the dinosaur. And this is the full head right there of the dinosaur. I might have it drawn better for you on something else. Now, mind you that I, you have to Google the image. If you turn it sideways, you'll be able to see the head of the dinosaur. Now, follow me here because it's, it's actually there, people. All you have to do is just take a look and look at it. It's there. Trust me. There's a head of a dinosaur that you can identify with because the teeth are there, the eye, the coloring, and all of that is there representing that of the reptilian and the snake and the serpent as well, too. Now, 
once you establish that this is Jerome, what Jerome says ahead of a dinosaur, which it is, it comes up, comes over her shoulder, and where the tail should be, it splits into three heads. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. And these creatures represent a bloodline that was spliced off of the dinosaur before the dinosaur became extinct, which ultimately led to the creation of mankind, ancient rooted genetics. Okay? Right there. And there, this is a record of it. Now, shows you that these genetics were reintroduced into us after they reached a certain bridging point. This woman is showing you that at a certain point in, in the history of mankind, which was that eight black man, okay, these genetics were reintroduced, and, <clears throat> and here's the point of where they were introduced. If you come right here, on this box, this cauldron-like kettle I call, you know what I mean, but it's a chest, there's an image, a darkened image, a silhouette of an ape right in here okay in the box shows you that all of these genetics were infused into ancient genetics meaning that let's think of this box as being that of Africa these locations how Egypt where genetic links were closer to that of the original our original ancestors and it shows you that it was a contamination everything put in a deluge um, like I told you, the Great Flood of Noah was not a Great Flood. The Great Flood only represents the mass flooding of genetics, contaminations on a mass scale of genetics, which were ancient rooted, okay, and contaminated. That's what this was all about. How from black, you got white. That's what this is all about, okay. Now, look at this box and you start seeing the faces that I'm telling you. Now, the girl shows you that this woman put all of these genetics into that, that, that cocktail, which represents black here. This girl reaches in, she takes the genetics out. What comes out? It shows you right here on her sleeve, which is another um, encryption style that Renaissance artists use. Um, they wear the faces of, of our ancestors on their sleeve, and I can show you this over and over and over again, okay, which in some of my, um, if you go to some of my 90 plus videos, you'll see it, or my alien UFO channels, you'll see it. Um, this, this is established in many Renaissance artists' artworks. Even in the Lost Book of Nostradamus, where you have the three Marys, um, in my encryptions on there, on the alien UFOs, you actually see the same similar thing. But anyway there's a face of a witch-like woman here and it shows you that this girl's um, 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 sleeve which creates like a bun on the hair is identical to this woman's hairstyle her hairstyle and not her hairstyle but their hairstyle and then over here it becomes unraveled over here and I, which I'll explain later now this genetic bridging that occurred here the unstabilizing of all shows you that it made it over here now, if you look, the blood that was there is shown represented here. It shows you how everything changed from here. The semen, which is in the white, shows you how it was extracted out. This is the color, the reason for the color codes, people. This represents semen. Shows you how now it is blanketed over. And then here, the reptilian shows you now how it is controlled in her hands and if you look at the color codes they match identically to what is over here now how does the dog fit into all of this they use animals lions hippos look at some of these renaissance artists artwork and then it shows you mutations in these creatures that are in their bodies and how they contributed pictures of um columbus with his son and how he visited three monks all of that is there and then it shows you where the hair was tied up where this this was uncontrolled before now her hair is let down you ever heard of the thing that the woman let her hair down well 
people, this hair gives new meaning to all of that because in her hair, let me see if I can bring up the other image because it looks like I'm running out of time here rambling on. I may be able to use my other marker on this. I'm going to show you here. This is this is um, the same image, but I have made some highlights on this. Let me see if I can squeeze in some more time here with this. I made my highlights. In her hair, you see that I penciled in. There's three images and likenesses of an eight. They go from darker to lighter. At this point, from the genetics coming over here, there's a, you'll see a creature there. There's an eye socket, there's an eye socket, there's a nostril, there's a slit of its mouth right there. And look how her hair cleverly creates an object snaking out of that ape's mouth and coming over here to this side. Which, you see that, which I highlighted for you? And it creates a new genetic strand and it shows you what it is right there. And there's the head of a snake. Now, it gets better than that because that ape is in about four or five different, no, actually, I think three likenesses right here in her hair. And it begins from over here. You'll see another likeness. I'm going to see if I can bring that in closer for you because bringing it in closer gives you a different idea of what is actually there. You see that? And then, here's the witch like woman. Wherever the ape is, you'll see the witch like woman. And let me see if I can get you on top of her nose right there. Let me see, let me see. There's the top of her nose. There's her mouth. This will be her eye socket. And this is the top of her head over top of the ape. You see that? And you know what it's telling us, people? That this girl's bloodline that is depicted is the cause by all of this cocktail, this chemistry that was created over here. Now, as you begin to look Look how you see in silhouettes in the shadows how you begin to see what look like half faces of that of the ape, look, nostril. Look at the silhouette and how it outlines that of the creature there. And then also on this side. Remember I told you there was an ape over here? Look how you see a silhouette of a face. I'm coming over a nose, a mouth, and coming over here. Look on either side and how she's dug up the middle. And it's showing you that she's being genetically bridged with that. It's equivalent to me coming over here and being a full-blooded African and having sex with her in multiple different ways and giving her a blood infusion. This is what this is actually saying. And how everything was broken down here by the use of ancient genetics which represent our reptilian ancestors. And how all of this stuff was reintroduced back into um, our genetics and then actually sent over and then there was a new genetic strand and line being actually created. Now I promised you more. Now oh by the way did I give you the the ape like image there? I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to bring that over here in the hairline. I don't know if you can see that right there but right there is another image of an ape right there and I don't know if you can see that but you can google it now that I'm showing you these images. You know people once you follow my videos you keep looking at this stuff believe it or not when <clears throat> as you start looking at them, looking at them more and more, your eyes become more um, in agreement to what you're actually seeing. Whereas before, you look at it and say, oh, that looks like that, but no, nah, I don't think so. I'm just seeing things. Now that I'm showing you what is around you, <clears throat> which is multidimensional images that are there, now, people, you will start looking at things in an uh, entire different way. Now, this dog is unique. Because this dog, on the on his rear end back here in, in the brown, back there, on the tail end of the dog, I wonder if I can get in closer there and show you that <clears throat> there are many different bloodlines in this dog. On his rear end right here, there is an image in the brown area, just in a small brown area, there's an image of an ape. Then on this side, there is a reptilian-like creature. I wonder if I can bring that up and turn that so you can see it. Like a reptilian skull <coughs> in the white. <clears throat> and it shows you how these genetics... I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if this is right for you. But this is a compelling picture here. And I want to get this to where you can actually see it. I wonder if I can bring that in without... Can I bring that in without shaking to the point to where 
there's a face there. There, there it is. Right. I want to. That's the only thing though about trying to get right there. There's the there's the head in the hindquarters of the dog. There's oh god, see this this is what screws me up here. This is where I don't have no lead way to play with this. All right, here. Here's the head of this creature. There's even a center line coming over the cranium. There's an eye. There's an eye. There's a nose, and it shows you the mouth right here, and then there's the chin. And look how the dog's mouth comes around to meet these genetics. Now. That entire little dog's body, I'm going to bring that in a little bit more. Then there's another little head there as well, two people. And then the ape is on the back of that. And people, when I tell you that this is very, very compelling, it really is. Go in there and look at that dog. And then if you, when you pan out, that guy's head that's right there is almost at the center of his chin. And if you look at it right, um, let me see if I have it here. There's a miniature head right there I'm gonna bring that miniature head in and it show you the genetics that actually went into this woman using this dog the genetic bridger check this out I'm gonna show you a miniature head and I want you to Google because it's actually compelling uh, I wonder if I can get in there to that little head alright when you Google this image I want you to look at this little head right there right there you'll see an outline of it I'm at the top of the head right there you'll see the eyes and there's a face the, in fact that the, the the white pencil tip covers the almost the entire face there. it's that small people but look there's a little head right there and it represents the ball of genetics that contributed to this genetic bridging of this entire picture and this is um, how titanium actually did it then I how did I twist this up here okay now, there's much more to this image than you could possibly ever imagine. But people, Google this image. Locate that head of that dinosaur. And then look at these three creatures that are branched off. It shows you genetically branched off of that. And in fact, you can even see a face of one of those creatures right here. You can see a face in white. There's an eye. There's an eye. There's a nose. There's a mouth right there. There's a chin. But there's also creatures in there. When you look at them, there's not just one face. There's multi multi-dimensional faces which represent when this creature, this, this creature was genetically bridged. It shows you the different passages of what that of the what the genetics took. Now you know where else you can see this? And there's a record of it. And the Peruvian burial stones, those burial stones represent how mankind was genetically bridged with um, and spliced with those of those in those burial stones where you see where on the Google the image and you'll see where the um, our ancestors over in Peru were actually taken and taken on the look of the of, of these dinosaurs. They are shown with axes in the dinosaur, then shown with the axe handle in their mouth or toward their mouth showing you that the blood of the dinosaur from which they spliced into this creature went is actually was infused into their body and then their image is that of the dinosaur it shows you that they metamorphed into that of the dinosaur you know what I mean and it looks like I mean for one dinosaurs should not have even been in Peru during the time of man but to see that the images on the stone and then showing you the message there's there's they're suggesting that they were if you let archae um, archaeologists and and um our experts and and um and scholars tell you that they're showing you slaying these dinosaurs it's not the case they're showing you through the use of their tools through their axes through their knives that they genetic it shows a splicing and they're showing that through that splicing and they're showing you that they put the other end of the one end of the splicing object into the creature that they're slaying with, in this case which was the dinosaur and then they put the other end of it to their mouth or to their body to let you know that they were spliced in they were infused and this is how they actually made that representation people you know what I mean and to confirm all of this you have artists referencing all of this this whole backdrop here is green which represents reptilian you know what I mean? It shows you an unbalanced genetic, an ancient genetic over here. This whole this whole backdrop over here shows you an imbalanced um, 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 genetic bloodline, and it shows you a chemistry that our ancestors knew, and to actually take and and and, and make a cocktail 
of these genetics to stabilize them in our bodies. And then that's what this is all about. Using animals, using ancient animals, which ultimately became that of our domestic animals. Not only were we changed through this chemistry and this cocktail, but our domestic animals today were through that chemistry of lions, through tigers, through bears, through crocodiles. <laughs> people there are records on mass scales that shows you how our bloodlines were altered. Remember when I told you about that dog appears everywhere? Look at Renaissance artist artworks. This is, I believe this is, I don't know if this is Paul Rubin. Look at this here. This is the baptism of, of Enna. Let me back this up. This is the baptism of Enoch right here. People, what in the world? Yeah. This is the baptism of Enoch. Look at this, people. What do you get out of this? If I just told you what I just told you in the back, here's that same dog, that two tone dog, brown and white. Some, in some cases, they use black and white. And showing you that the, the, the fur of the dog is the same as that of the cloak that Enoch is wearing. And the dog is licking on the ground and then encrypted in the ground over here. You have two horses. Okay? Two horses right there. It's showing you the penises of the horses encrypted in the ground. One is here and the other, I believe, is down here. I can't actually see. I got to highlight. This is going to be a whole other video. Showing you where the genetics of these animals, of all of these men and these animals, were used to taint the bloodlines of these, at these descendants of Africa. All of this together, a cocktail's term, chemistry of genetic brewing, which represents baptism, baptism. And by the way, people, the baptism of Jesus and all of this, I can do the same exact thing because I can show you the creatures that was used to taint these bloodlines. All right? I'm going to take that down. I just want to show you how that dog is in everything. All right? Now, I'm going to bring you to... This is the return of the flight of, of, of the Holy Family from Egypt. This is the return of the Holy Family from the flight to Egypt. People, what in the world is an artist suggesting? There's that dog again. That's the reason why I brought this up. This dog is the most famous dog in, in all of ancient Renaissance artist history because this dog appears everywhere. People, what is there to acknowledge and get out of this image? Which I can show you through all of my other translations of this artwork over underneath that is underlying. There, this can easily be translated on what is being stated here, people. Here's another image. And this is on, I think this might be on the rest, rest to Egypt. Oh, it was flight into Egypt. And here, people, you have a similar scenario. Look at this. There's my dog right there. Look at this, people. What is there to get out of all of that? And with all of these encryption coding styles and everything, I know what angels represent. I know what children represent in these in these um in these um, encrypted artists artworks and over all people the animals their contribution I know exactly what all of this means because you don't look at the donkey for being that of our modern day donkey you look at the donkey for its ancient rooted past all of the genetics that that donkey transcended from and being what that donkey there is telling you what is actually happening with us because at this point the donkey has been broken down in its genetics from its early from the um, um, from its ancient rooted stages and it, it has an entire different representation if you take this image of this donkey and play it back play it back all you have to do is just rewind it and it will show you where the donkey actually emerged from and at what point it came in and at what pivoting point that it actually contributed to the alternative genetics of that of mankind which originated from that of eight Africans 
and so forth and so with. People, that's what these images are all about. You don't, you, I mean, you try to understand why are these images, why are these paintings looking the way they do? I just don't understand it. You want to understand. You relate to them in a sense, but you just can't understand the grasp of why would it, what would compel an artist to make these images? People, there is not one Renaissance artist painting that do not tell me a similar story as what I just had shared with you here. It shows you what is happening. I can tell you who you are, where you transferred from, where you came from genetically, how it was done, at what point it was done, what, what point in history and time, because people, there was a record, a mass scale record that shows us what was done. And just like I told you, the same similar stuff is in cartoons being shown to us today with our kids. The movies, um, the one I just watched the movie on, the, the, I think it was the first one of The Hobbit. And all of this stuff can be read into. You You probably look at a movie and say, well, why in the hell would they make a movie like this? A lot of our ancient gothic-like style movies. All of this stuff that I'm showing you here, people, transcends into the time now in a more modernized way of course but people I can break down movies and explain them to you in a way that you could never even realize now toys in your children's bedroom curtains and, and, and bed coverings all of this stuff people is encrypted in there and I can tell you why it is it's because of our ancestors whom have this multi-dimensional existence and how there is a communication today with our outer world to our inner world and I can show you how it was done how you can communicate and how you can be aware of all that that is around you because I have had a true genuine paranormal experience and encounter it is in me everything that you see here I am a part of there is not one point of this that I do not understand and a lot of people talk about this and they talk about that, but they're not showing you a damn thing. I have no end, people. And I'm going to continue and continue to break down everything that is around you. And to the point that where reality is in all that I am saying. And reality as you know it is no more. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. I'll see you on my next video. And, um... There, and yeah, there will be a next because, like I said, I don't have no end because there's no end to this stuff. Um, I'll, I'll bring you into my next video and I'll see you then. I appreciate your, your views and hopefully one day here we'll go viral and um, we'll be on TV. But it's, we're going to be hard pressed to do that, people, because a lot of this stuff here that I'm showing you is already in the knowledge of those at the top. That those that 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 could, that would help me get into Hollywood or help me get on the mainstream TV, I mean, a lot of their success is founded on their knowledge of this. So it'd be just like me going to um to the Vatican and say, "Hey, look what I found! Look at this my religion." Uh, you know what they'll do? And back then and back in the day when um when they were killing folks for being heretics and all of that, and which I'm gonna do a video on too, by the way, I would be labeled a heretic and as I'd be tortured, they'd torture me for all of my knowledge first. And then keep me in um in a cell in prison because now that I'm seeing these things, they would want this knowledge as well too. So you know what they would do? They would inf they would do genetically bridge me with them. That and I know it sounds crazy. Get my knowledge, and then when they were done and they couldn't get no more, they would burn me at the stake so nobody else could get it. And that's what that was all about. And I'll do a video on that because you know what? There are paintings that show you and it describe exactly what I just said just now. A heretic was, a, and matter of fact, there's a movie on it too. And I'm going to share that with you in the next video. I don't want to share it all. But that's going to be a good um, video of mine too. So look out for that. What heretics were. What they considered to be heretics. The reason why they were in prison. Because they were enslaved to get their knowledge. And their gift that they had. A gift that I actually had. 
that's what this is all about. But I'll tell you about that later. And how I know that is not only do I, did I experience and, 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 and see it in a vision first, but I, I see now to confirm everything that I said. When you look at the Renaissance artist artwork, it shows you. Okay, so I'll share that with you at another time. All right, and that's going to be a great video as well, too. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. I'm also on Alien UFOs. You can see me there. Um, I'm go to the Dreams and Experiences forum. And um, my title there is I Am an Alien, and so are you. And I have some wonderful things there. That's where I actually um, evolved from. That site helped me find my way um, through my experience. And it's an outlet because the more that I let out people, the more comes into me. It's like I can't keep this stuff bottled up. It would send me insane. I have to release it in order to bring out new. You know what I mean? And that's what this is all about. Alright? So, I'm letting out. And that's why you don't see me letting up. Alright? So, I'm going to get going. Um, I'm sitting here looking at... If you look down up in here, too. You look in the sheets, you start to see faces as well, too. This represents semen. This represents blood. This represents reptilian. This represents how the 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 bloodline of ape was. She let her hair down. How how this is all became a controlling factor from a unstabilizing factor over here. If you look into the backdrop, you will see faces from the largest to the smallest. In fact, I can see you may not see it all at once, but if you take a, a deeper look, you'll see an eye socket there. You'll see a larger face. This will be a um. A mouth open there, teeth there, jawline. It goes from the largest, and the other eye socket is over there, to the smallest. Look into the wall back here, and you'll see a large face right there that I just described right there. And then you'll see it broken down into smaller faces, which represents genetics. Almost like you, if, if, if back then, if you, if you drawed your blood, it showed you genetic bloodlines, which included that of reptilian and how they were genetically bridged. Look at this from, from the distance. Imagine it's an eye there, an eye, a right, uh, right eye, a left eye over there. Coming down in here, there's a nostril. And then down in here, you start seeing teeth. And then down in here, there's an open mouth. And then here, there's a jawline. And this is a larger face in the shadows, showing you that it was bridged down the middle where, it, where the nose is split down into this woman. And then showing you that all these genetics were actually transferred over, shows you bloodline. And to how, look, they came over to here bridged into here and how they were went from being unstabilized to being stabilized you would either think that I am one crazy joker or either you would start looking at things in fact it looks like a giant skull right there the whole image and it's overshadowed by these pillars this woman and everything that we see here you either think that I'm one nutty joker or there's a lot of substance of what I am saying but Sooner or later, even if you're not on board, you will be because everything that you believe in, I will systematically be taking the founding stones away from anyone. So sooner or later, something's going to give. So but through my patience, I'll just keep making videos. On that note, I'm going, people. I'll see you in my next video. Jerome Wright.